Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel. Nothing more. When you're done, please take the glory. Satisfy just to see you glorify. Oh, take the stage, Lord. that you are my everything and my everything is you that without you Lord I am absolutely nothing that when I climb a stage I can stand and speak without fear only because you speak through me I'm a vessel no doubt absolutely yielded and submitted unto you. This is another day, Father. Show yourself mighty in the midst of your people. Speak through me, Lord. Grant me the tongue of the learned. Grant me a tongue that cannot be resisted. Grant me the tongue of wisdom and of understanding. Touch every man and woman in this place, Lord, and do what only you and nobody else can do. Thank you for your presence, that when we're done, we will all know together that we have been to the house of the Lord. Thank you for your son and your daughter, for the commission you have committed to them. Thank you for the vision for which they have prepared. Thank you, Lord, for every single square meter is accounted for. Thank you, Lord, for the souls you have assigned to every square inch. Thank you, Father, for they will gather. Wherever the carcass is, oh Lord, we know that the vulture will gather. Thank you, Lord, as I leave a seed. Ni Maria Kasenda Bokunu Mari Kari Kari Karuba Kashanda Bakari that that day will come that they will say, Look at what the Lord has done. But the space which we have prepared has become insufficient for His. Thank you because you will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that they plan, think, or expect. Because you are God. Thank you for every man and woman, every child that is in this church today. Not a single one will come to church today without going home bearing fruits. Carrying baskets of harvests of your goodness, of your mercy, 
and of your love. We bless you, Lord. We love you. I love you, Father. I want the whole world to know that I love you. I love you, Lord. Yes, for your mercies never fails me. Oh, my days have been held in your hands. name we have prayed. Amen. Please be seated. I want you to know that the enemy will never rejoice at your joy in Christ. But I want you to also know that your joy in Christ is not about where you are, what is going on, what has happened, what is about to happen. Is about the fact that Jehovah is your God and his, his fatherhood in your life is enough for you to rejoice over him. Just knowing that you have God the Father as your father. It is not about what you have received from him yet. It is not about what you're waiting to receive from him. It's about the privilege to have the right to call him father. It is about knowing what that fatherhood of his in your life, what it represents. It's about knowing the privilege, the honor, the grace, the opportunity of the fatherhood of Christ in your life. So that we're not judging our moments, our relationships with God based on what we have, what we don't have, what we're waiting for, what we do not have. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. The Bible says the Lord will deliver them from them all. Why? Because he knows there will be afflictions. The trials of our faith work at patience. Why? God knows we will be tried. He said, when you, blessed is the man who was, who sorrows with those who sorrow. When people are mourning and you mourn with them, the Bible calls you blessed. Why? Because amongst us, there will be people who will have seasons and times that they will mourn. Too many examples for us in the Bible of what life can be. Job was a man after God's heart. Yet he was a man tried to the highest level. But none of it Changes who God is. No matter what else you take away from here today, it is an understanding that times and seasons will come differently. But one thing is constant, never changes. Who God is, what he represents, his power is not diminished by your troubles. His mightiness is not undermined by your trials. His ability Take the whole earth in one hand and turn it upside down, if he chooses. It's not changed by the fact that the season is the roughest you have been. That the whole world is in trouble. It doesn't change God. When COVID shut down the whole world in one go, an invisible force. Who saw COVID? But it shut it down. It didn't change God. He's still God. 
And when the season of it seemed to be passing, he started seeing the power of God. And through COVID, some had their biggest testimonies. God will always be revealed, no matter what is going on. So I don't want you to allow yourself to ever be deceived. Now, we're talking about women of wealth, women and their wealth. You know, one of the easiest ways that the enemy cheats us is to confuse you about who you are. It does not matter who you are. If you have no deep-seated understanding, not head understanding, if you have no deep-seated understanding of who you are, the slave in your father's house will ride over you. You can have a million dollars in the account and be hungry if you have no understanding of what you have. I read a story some time ago about this boy who selfishly was looking after his grandmother because he wanted to inherit her. He knew she had a lot to give and there weren't many people around. So he was expectant that he will inherit from this woman. But on the other hand, Oibo people are crazy. She can give her cats all her money. She can donate to God knows, museum or anything and her children will get nothing. You know, it's here we think it's taboo. But they don't send though. They will send their money on errand in any direction. So this boy was all around trying to take care of his grandmother to be in her good books for his own reasons. Anyhow, I think he got tired of waiting and acted somehow at the end of the day and left the woman alone. She did pass. And when she passed, he came expecting to inherit everything. And then the lawyer came and gave him a letter from his grandmother. And in the letter, she thanked him for the time and season when he took care of her and was there when there was nobody else. And said she has only left him this simple painting. The painting looked like the one you buy under the bridge. So it looked like a worthless thing. It looked like it had no value, absolutely nothing. And so he despised the woman in his heart and just abandoned the painting somewhere God knows how many times he cursed her over because to him, she was mean and wicked to him. But she gave him something that he considered totally worthless. So he was struggling. And then one day, some of his colleagues at work, this was now like five, six years, just came to his house. He wanted to move. So he was trying to just do like a garage sale of everything in his house. So he thought he'll invite his friends over for the last time before selling everything off and going. As it turned out, you see, God is always watching you. Not a single one of you is out of his view. It doesn't matter where you think you are, what you think you are doing. Whether you're in the wrong place or in the right place, the eyes of the Lord is running to. No matter where you enter, God enters with you because he's there. He totally occupies and inhabits the earth and the entire universe. So don't ever deceive yourself to think there's a place where you go that you have gone away from God. What's that song, Tolu? Uh, you can't go deep. You can't go high. I, I don't know how to sing. They know. Yes, he's so, yes. He's so wide I can't get out of it. He's so wide I can't get over it. He's so deep you can't get under it. If you take a degree to the side, a degree to the left, I'm a science student, everything is in science. So take one detour, whatever degree you choose, you can't get out of it. Anyhow, God was watching this boy. So one of his friends said, Ah, where are the things you want to sell? Then the guy saw the painting and said, 
Why did you find this? He said, oh, worthless, useless thing that my grandmother left for me. Can you imagine? Went on with his stories of woes, as we all tend to lament half the time, even when God is working all things out for us. We're busy lamenting, complaining, yet the Bible says every single thing works for your good and my good. Whether I understand it or not, the Bible says all things, have not, some things have not been given to me to understand. How be they are mysteries unto God and unto God alone. So your understanding does not stop God. So whether you understand it or not, it's irrelevant. God is in the midst of you. So the guy looked at him and said, do you know what this is? I said, yeah, some stupid painting that my grandmother left for me. You know, in this digital age, just take your phone. Do some Google. You will get some. He said, this is one piece of a rare collection of historical paintings that has the unimagined value that you cannot even begin to think of. The guy looked at the guy as if, are you insane? This thing. So went back, got the whole collection for him, showed him the piece that he has of it and the value in millions of dollars. Don't clap. Now, what is the basis of my story? Do you know your real worth? Or have you been deceived into thinking that your value is in your perfect legs, your straight arm, your figure eight, your beautiful face, your false hair, or original hair, your whatever it is, your flawless skin. So when you don't see what you think is value in others, you then look at yourself and you're wondering what God did. Was he crazy when he was designing me because look at what he did with Sister K. Or you're like, how do you write? They say God has a perfect plan for every life. Why is his own plan so good? And everything is working for him. And I am struggling. His father was this, so he had opportunity from beginning. So what? Have you seen many people? You know, at this stage, a lot of my friends were turning 60. When we laugh at the guys at school that we thought were the cool guys, and we see where some of those cool guys, where they are now. And we think about the guys that nobody paid attention to. That girls did not even want to talk to. And how they turned out. What is the lesson there for you? You cannot define what your value is. Your real value is in who God says that you are. All your worth is that God says you are made after his own image. Now, what is the value of God? Who has a sense of the worth of God? Because if you are made in his image, like him, of him, male and female, lest anybody thinks I'm talking about just the guys. Because me, as far as I know, every promise in the Bible is for the children of God. And he made them what? Male and female. Every single promise. Wherever the source of your feet shall touch, he has given to you for a possession. Male and female. Whatsoever you put your hands to do, you will prosper at it. Male and female. You will inherit the earth. Male and female. Every door that you command to open in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it will open. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Male and female. I will sow, I will reap multiple folds. Every single promise you can find in the Bible is yours. I will declare a thing and it shall be established. And light shall flood my path. The power to create. Do you know what it is to create value? And in this case, I have it in my mouth. I sleep with it. I wake up with it. I open, I declare, heaven backs me up. You're trying to figure out what your worth is. 
There is no bank that can write a check for what you're worth. There isn't one. Why? Because, perchance, the desires of the heart of a righteous man that the Lord will grant will be your desire to own that bank. Might not be today. Might not be tomorrow. It might not be the day after. But if it's a day that the Lord has called and that you desire and you walk with the Lord with it, it will come to pass. Look, one thing I have learned in my journey. There's no mountain that is too high. There isn't a table that is too big. There isn't a door that is too big for me. The child of the Most High God, not to kick and walk through. The Lord has ordained that it is part of my journey. But the Bible puts a condition for me to see the realization of the value that the Lord has placed on me. If what? You can believe. What is my responsibility? To believe the word of God. So that I can truly manifest the worth and the value that God has placed on me. Now, that I am who God says I am is not in question. That heaven has prepared a banquet that is complete and full where my life is concerned is not in question. But that I have a responsibility is a fact. They that know their God, they shall be what? And do what? So where are the responsibility points? They that know. It's your responsibility to what? To know. How do you know your God? You don't even need a Bible. Why? Your phone has Bible. Lest we say, I can't carry it, it's too big. Everybody will look at you, it's okay. They will think you are on Instagram. They will think you are chatting. Your phone, download Bible there. There's Bible there. They that know their God. They that take the time to discover who God is. They that take the time to discover his instructions to them. They that take the time to discover his promises to them. They that... Time to dwell in his presence, to understand, to receive instruction and revelation of what God has ordained concerning them. See, God is a God of multiplicity. One God, multiple revelations. How many of us are in this room? If there are 10,000 of us in this room, there are 10,000 revelations of God in this room. Why? Your assignment is not mine. My assignment is not yours. The plan and the plot for my life is different from yours. We might end up in the same place. All of us will end up in the same place if we follow God. Where is that place? Heaven. Everything else in between is an individual plan created by God for each person. Own yours. Own it. And don't look to the left or to the right. Why? You get distracted by looking at what others are doing. It's a waste of time. The best you can be is a fake of somebody else. A hundred percent fake of somebody else is zero percent of you. Why do you even want to be that? You will never be fulfilled nor satisfied. Because the joy of the Lord, the Bible says, is our strength. And you get the joy of the Lord from pleasing God and knowing that you are in the will of God. The peace of God is the mark of God's presence in our lives. And when we're working according to his will and according to instruction, then we find peace and satisfaction. And victory is easier for us even when we walk through the valley. Even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. As long as we are where God has called us, there is an inbuilt protection, which is why the fire could not consume the three Hebrew children. It wasn't because the fire wasn't consuming. Remember, it consumed the Babylonians who were trying to put them there. The ones that didn't go there, that were trying to put them there, they got consumed. The ones they threw in were standing. Why? Because God permitted the circumstance 
in order to create an evidence for generations to come that you will be tried, you will be tested, your faith in me, your declaration of who I am in your life will be challenged by circumstances and situations. But no matter what you see, remember, no matter how difficult it is, no matter what level the fire is raised to, and for all of us, sometimes the fire is raised to God knows what. I'm a fountainier, a true child of the Fountain of Life Church, proud of my pastor like nothing else. But I have watched a man who has been tested and tried and who I know that he has nothing else but Jehovah. Who I have watched for 30 years walk in integrity before God and serve him and give him everything. Yet I have watched him tried and tested. And I've watched him standing. Walking through painfully. Sometimes weak of strength. But yet knowing. He is God. I love you Lord. For your mercies never fails me. All my days, I have held in your hands. I don't know songs, though. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Like the second verse, well, you have to sing it for me. I love that, your voice. That, that is it. Oh, you have led me through the fire. Hang it, hang it, hang it, hang it. You love the song, but did you forget this? You have led me through the fire because part of the value that I have, part of my real wealth. Is that the fire through which many faint and are consumed? I am your Mojesu. Knowing that the whole of heaven is available to me. Listen, I want you to understand your worth. Don't ever trade yourself for cheap. Bring it on. Toripe, when the devil tries you, let him know who you are. Let him understand what you have. Let him know who you are. You have led me through the fire. He didn't say you have left me in the fire. You have led me through the fire. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Walk through. Not consumed in the valley of the shadow of death. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will always walk through. Remember who you are. You're looking for your worth. Your worth, what money cannot buy. You have what many will die to have. You know, when I was appointed the chairman of First Bank, my pastor called me and said, Pastor Blessing, sit down. You, I know you. I know you don't have anything but Jesus. If a man just got this position, he will be searching or the power with which to occupy it. That's how they join Ogoni. That's how they go and join one fraternity. They're looking for power. Because they understand that there are places that you occupy. That if you do not have power, you cannot survive. Because you will stand in the way of powers. And because you will stand in the way of powers, you need power that can contain and keep you there. And therefore, they join networks of evil trying to be part of it in order to be able to survive. My pastor said, but mom, well, I know you have nothing else but Jesus. But I want you to know 
that no matter what you see in that place, he will be enough for you. That no matter what you see, I don't want you to ever be afraid or to be intimidated. I want you to know that Jehovah will be enough for you. I told him, I understand, sir. I hear you. And I understood. I had been on the board for five years before I became chair. So I knew what he was talking about. And I knew the implications of the seat. Mm. The day I was appointed, I was sober for three weeks. I just had this heaviness in my spirit. But I kept away from all the, uh, what, the what do you call it, the trending and all the noise. I didn't come to Nigeria. I stayed away. I wanted time to sort myself out in the presence of God and have understanding and come to a place that I knew that, okay, this is my assignment here and the Lord will see me through. And on the day that was my first day, I went to the bank on the 1st of January 2016, took eight of my praying friends. I don't think they've ever had any such thing before. I called our group chairman and said, sir, it might be no, but I am going to go to the bank to pray on the 1st of January. If I chance somebody will report me, they will think I'm doing something. The man laughed. He said, they know you. I don't think anybody will be surprised. Ah, what up? Better be known for who you are. You better make your identity clear. That is your real value. You better let the enemy know what you have. You better let the enemy be afraid of you because of what you have. So we went. As we entered from the ground floor of the reception, I told the security, we're not doing anything. We've just come to pray. We had anointing and we had our Bible. You know, when people were watching the Prime Minister of UK do his ritual in front of 10 Downing Street and they were laughing. I don't laugh at things. I see what my lesson is in it. You are laughing? The guy who has a God knew that he was going into a place of power. You know the challenge? The church doesn't understand power. That is the truth. It's how we get messed around with even in the country. We don't understand power. So the church doesn't know how to play power. The guy knew that he was going into a place and a sea and there are powers. And he knew that he would need what he believed in to be his power. And he was not ashamed of his own God. Are you ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And therefore, I don't hide it. There were people who told me, when you sit in those kind of places, you can't be doing all this. I said, the one that I will sit in that I cannot preach the gospel, I will not take it. But the one that I will sit in, she be already have the power of the office. I use it as I deem fit because God gave me the opportunity and we go together. We're an inseparable package. We prayed. We anointed. We went through the floors. We went to where my office is on the top floor there. Empty room. They had cleared it out for the last person that left, preparing for the new person that was coming. We anointed. Went into the boardroom. Went to the head of the table where I would sit as chair. We gave the seat to the Lord. That's why when the troubles came, they were nothing to me. Why? Because though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and the Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free, troubles will come. I want you to know who you are. I want you to know what your true worth is. It's not your cars, your houses. All of those are byproducts of your understanding. Listen, God in one second can bless you with things you can't even begin to imagine. So in here, it's nothing, it's peanuts. It's like giving a child candy and the child is excited. It's like all these sugar daddies that take young girls, give them money to go and buy lunch, buy them a ticket to London. What's that? Money that you can make yourself. All the things they will give you that is nothing, but they will take from you eternity. They're giving you fake and taking Rolex watch from you. And they gave you a gold, a fake piece of gold. And because you're so naive and you're only thinking about the transaction, you give away the value. Like that young man was about to sell millions of dollars worth of painting for like five, ten dollars because that's how you would sell it in a garage sale. Why? Because he had no sense of its value. 
And because he was driven by motive of selfishness. And I bet the Lord, the grandmother knew what she was doing. And the Lord blinded him for a season to teach him a lesson. Because he wasn't applying himself. He was just waiting to inherit. But when he didn't inherit anything over those six years, he had to work himself out. Where has the Lord assigned you to? What value are you sitting on? Where is the true content of gold's, God's diamond and gold and platinum and rubies and sapphires that sits in your life as your gifts that you have not used? Your real wealth, it's in your value to God. It's in your value for the things of God. Everything else will come. But if you sort out your relationship with God, if you take the time to have an understanding, God will open doors to you that you absolutely know nothing about. I can tell you without any fear of contradiction, in every place that I sit, I didn't know anyone. Binance, everybody's talking about Binance. I didn't know what Binance was. I'm not joking. It's true. I didn't know what it was because I wasn't into the whole blockchain and crypto space. But what I know they needed. See? They're two different things. They needed what I knew. And they needed people like me. And they were looking for us around the world and found 11 of us. And somehow, this child of God always shows up on those kind of lists. Build your legacy. It's the trail of how you live every day. Build your legacy in how you live your testimony of righteousness, of integrity, of character, and of your righteousness. So that when it counts, when somebody needs to speak for somebody, your name comes up. Every door you need to walk through, every opportunity you would need to take, there's always a gatekeeper. There are gatekeepers in your life every day. But you don't know them. Some of them you have never met. But they have watched you. They have seen you. Why? Your life is on a stage. Don't kid yourself. It's not just Tolu and your pastors that are on stages. Your entire life is on a stage. There is an audience you have not invited. They're watching you play out scene one, scene two, scene three, scene four. They are taking records. When it matters, they will speak for you. Or speak against you. What will that teach you? Handle human beings like treasures. Because they are. You're leaving a legacy with every person that you encounter. Do it well. You want to make money? Money is a byproduct of a life lived according to the will of God. Money is a byproduct. And don't forget, there are different kinds of money. There is money that destroys. There's money that will bring you joy and peace. Because it's a tool in your hands. What God is looking for in the house of God are treasurers, not money bags. There's a difference between someone who just has wealth, has money, has houses, has, and a treasurer for the Lord. There are two different things. A treasurer for the Lord is a seed that will never dry. Why? The source of the treasurer is the Lord himself. And since all the silver and the gold belongs to him, when the treasurer is on assignment, whatever is required, wherever it sits or stands, at the point in time that the assignment requires it, the Lord will facilitate and orchestrate all things to bring it to you so you can have it for the assignment. But it's about God it's not about you. Now, the beauty of it is, I have never seen a hose attached to a tap that is running, that is dry. The hose is permanently watered and so. So you will have the good things of life. Oh, I love good things. I love to fly first class. I love jewelry. I love to be beautiful. This morning, I was out very late last night. One of my friends, it was her birthday. And we managed to have to stay late. And then I had to wake up very early this morning. Why? Because I knew in my heart, there was no way I was not going to church for first service. 
So I probably got like four hours sleep. So by the time I got home, my staff had closed. So there was nobody to iron what I would prefer to wear. And this morning, I did not want to wait for them to do it and be late because of that. So I took the first thing that looks right up. Well, you guys aren't looking for my clothes. You're looking for me. Ah. So I think you'd rather that I show up than that I'm waiting for some clothes. But you know what? It doesn't even matter what the garment looks like. When the glory of the Lord is upon it. <laughs> Haven't you seen those tech boys? They will be playing with all of us as if there's nothing. They're sitting on billions of dollars and they will wear some stupid t-shirt and jeans. You have to understand what matters. I have learned to learn from everything. God speaks every moment, every second. In every way. Wealth is available to you. The silver and the gold, they belong to your father. The cattle on a thousand hills, they are his. Everybody that is holding money that you think, this man is a wicked man and he has so much money. Don't worry about him. Why? In a twinkle of an eye, I have watched supposed billionaires become zeroniers. It just takes... If you don't understand God, even if you have the money in the bank, you will not have the money. The money will have you. In 2008, when we had the global financial crisis, the country that had one of the highest number of millionaires in the world was Germany. When that market crash happened, a lot of people's wealth was tied to the market. And when the market crashed, they lost a lot of money on paper. Which is why you must be careful to understand where your true wealth lies. Some of the richest guys that you can imagine who live in beautiful homes, have beautiful wives, cars and everything, committed suicide. For what? Because some stock market said that I'm worth something. No, no. Because they looked at their value balance and it told them that they had moved from being linears, whether it's billion or million, to literally zero. If anybody remembers, Citibank shares are like a thousand seven hundred and something dollars or something. In that season, it was worth a dollar. Yes, that's how bad the market was. Some of them just decided, I can't live without that balance that I see. And they committed suicide. What's the sad part of it? The governments of the world realized they couldn't let the market free flow. So a lot of governments put money behind the market. Within the next 12 to 18 months, the markets were restored. So the guys who died, died for nothing. Why? Because if you understand the stock market, it's a cyclical process. The share has value today. Okay. In fact, I was explaining to my son yesterday that there was some share, I wouldn't even name the company, so I'm not advertising for them. That I bought when? I don't know, maybe two years ago or something. For 20 naira or 30 naira. Now right now, it's 80 something naira. It's over 300 or so percent gain on it. And I said, one thing you have to learn is not to be greedy when you're doing stock market. Set your target. If I get 40% value on shares in the market, I sell. I take my money, I reinvest, I re-go in. Most people go and enter into what they don't understand. Bible says seek for knowledge. In seeking knowledge, seek understanding. If you want to play in a field, go and understand how it works. If you want true wealth, understand how wealth works. It's not in the Naira and Cobble. If you have skills, you have understanding, and you're following God, and you are a prayerful, discerning person who invests in leaving the right trail over time, who is diligent in his ways and in his works, the Lord will open doors to you in places you have never imagined. It will cause men to seek you out, to bless you. Whatsoever you put your hands to do, you will prosper at it. You might work at something for a season and it will not work. But so what? Like these millionaires went to die, it was just a season. If they had God, they would have known. That the God that built yesterday, I know me sorrow. Only means sorrow. Me, I have versions of my, I have my own version of every song. So only means sorrow. That means my today is speaking. 
Whatever it is, it might not be speaking exactly what I want to hear, but God is in the midst of me. I shall not be afraid. God is in the midst of my today. So whatever it is saying, if I trust him, they that trust their God, they that trust him, will trust him even when it seems like he's not working. And then he will manifest it. That no matter what my today is saying, I am absolutely certain that my tomorrow will speak. And it will speak according to the word of God. Why? The Bible says everything will work together for my good. So what does that mean? My tomorrow has no choice but to end as good for me. My true wealth. Have you seen a man that dies? See, go and watch, um, what do they call it? History Channel or National Geographic and watch all the excavations in Egypt. All the pharaohs that died and they thought that they are carrying gold and diamonds and everything to the far beyond and they buried them in all those pyramids. Uh, in fact, it's not just that it's there. It's that archaeologists from foreign lands, the rule of archaeology is whoever discovers it, collects it. You pay a tax to the country, but you take it. And who are the ones who are discovering most of it? Foreigners. So their generational wealth that they hid in false belief. God has never lost one naira before. Don't kid yourself. No matter who is rich for now, it's irrelevant to God. His business is to keep you saved, delivered, and get you to heaven. In the course of it, if you have understanding and you walk with him and you walk in his ways, he will distribute to you for the season for the assignment of your life, which is the most important thing. You will finish well. You will have what you have. But when you two you are going, you will leave it behind. Why? Because heaven has no need for dollar or yen or pounds. You transfer money to your heavenly account by what you do with that which is placed in your hands while you're on earth. Oh, we all have heavenly accounts, my sisters and my brothers. How do you transfer wealth into it? Because when you get to heaven, you'll be shocked at the bank balances of some people. Some people that you look at as poor people, you'll be shocked at their balances. Because remember the widow. It wasn't in the quantity. It was in the percentage of her heart that she gave to the Lord. Ten pennies out of ten pennies. It's a hundred percent. Ten pounds out of one million pounds. I don't even know the percentage. When they say something is negligible, they don't even record it. You get zero. So, what do I hope you take away from here today? That there's nothing more precious in the world than you. There's nothing more beautiful in the world than you. That there's no one for which God has set up the whole of heaven and done all the work, but for you. That what he has done, the plan he has set up for you, is specifically for you. Your plan does not look like your friends. It doesn't look like your neighbors. That's why I don't get distracted by anybody's agenda. You know, there's a whole line of fountainers here. Me, I'm what I call the runaway pastor. I always laugh at myself. I would tell them, I say, you know me, I'm runaway pastor. Because you see me here today, you don't see me tomorrow. But I am not confused. So on account of that, I'm not trying to be like a pastor who has the time to be in church all the time. Why? Our assignments are different. Me, I know my assignment. I'm here today. There's second service in our church. Ideally, I don't like to preach on Sundays outside because I like to be in church. But once in a while, I do it if I have to. So you guys are privileged today that I do it. Because I like to sit under my own pastor and receive the word. So the bottom line is, when I do that, I do it. But when I'm out as well, no matter where, no matter on what assignment, corporate, church, not church, I am not a schizophrenia. I only have one life and it belongs to God. Every aspect of my life is in his service. Therefore, I am not confused that just because I'm a pastor, but also in the corporate world, anything I'm not doing in church means, hey, me, I'm not there. Hey, I am not a business person that is a Christian. I'm a Christian assigned to business. So, I am not confused. 
I want you to have clarity about who you are. You're a doctor? Yes. Assigned by God into the medical field. To go there and show forth the glory of the Father. To show what it is to be a Christian in love. To show what it is to do what you know how to do, but to also teach people to believe God for the miracle of healing when you need it. To be able to tell the patient, I can help, but honestly, I'm trusting God for a miracle here. So when the miracle comes, the patient will know that God did it. You're a teacher. How many children are committed to you? You know the ones that are troubled and the ones that are not. You're teaching them what the curriculum says. But more than that, you're teaching them love. You're teaching them grace. You're teaching them the things of God to shape their life, to support and encourage them. We are on assignment. Our real value is in the assignment that we have and our understanding of it and our ability to take a hold of it and use the resources of heaven to deliver it. We have work to do. There's a world in confusion and there's an army of us. If every single one of us will own our own space and stop looking to the left and to the right, somebody has a car, somebody has to so what? Me, I work with missionaries. I have never seen the most anybody like these people, the most humble set of people in the world, educated, empowered and everything, yet consumed with the assignment. They don't count it. Reality is, when you go to a funeral, what do you see? A man in a casket. If his family is lucky and they can afford all the expensive vaults, then maybe they won't break into his uh, grave. Otherwise, if you put the body in some places, if you like, put treasures there. Like the Egyptian mummies, somebody is coming to take it. Why? Those bodies don't mean anything. It's true. When my mother died, I did not go for a lying in state. When my father died, I did not go for a lying in state. I do not do lying in state. Why? That is a vessel. The human, the, the spiritual being that I know has gone. Honor, respect, but I want to remember who I know and walk from that memory. To each one, his own belief. Stand up. I want you to ask the Lord for one thing. I want you to ask the Lord to grant you revelation power. To give you an understanding of who you are. To reveal you as God planned and ordained it to you. To open your eyes to see the true value of who you are in Christ. And then to give you the grace to be satisfied to walk the call of God in your own life and not walk like another. I can't sing like Tolu. God knows if I try. Maybe I will be 40% of it. Why am I wasting time? I don't play to my weaknesses. I play to my strength. It's my policy for life. To play to your weakness is to waste resources you should use to strengthen your strength. I, I just don't. I outsource my weaknesses. I focus on my strength. So the things I'm good at, I'm really good at them. The things I'm not, I don't bother with them. I outsource it. And I go on with life. What do I ask God for? Send me helpers. The ones that will help me to perfect the things I'm not good at. So I can go. That's why there's a man and a woman in the house. When he was built, the Lord knew. Now you see this pastor, he has plenty gifts. But there are things he doesn't have, no matter how much he tries. And then created her. Complete. She's not half. God created her complete in herself as a true woman of worth and value. And then placed all the value that she is into his life so that together each one of them will strengthen one another. That's why the Bible says, can two work together except they agree? You must agree to share your strengths and your value with one another. Iron sharpened iron. The foolish man is the one that thinks he has a slave in a wife. He's an idiot because he will get nothing. It's true. The value of the help you get from your helper is the value of the helper you allow to emerge. If you are stupid enough to think, oh, I'm this God man. When God himself did not oppress women, then you're a fool because you're not like God. If he made the Deborahs of this world, it's because he knew there's a strength that a woman... And don't forget, 
When they create a helper for you, they create something better than you. Ah. If you are trying to carry load and you cannot carry it and you look for a helper, who do you look for? Someone weaker than you or someone stronger than you? I, I'm not, it's not me. I'm just explaining the analogy of it. Oh, hey. You guys should not come and put me in trouble. Oh. Eh? The wise man knows. See, I came here from church. Sunday is one day that my husband and I will go to church together. But me, I'm a pastor, so I will tend to do two services. So we, we'll, we live in Ikoi. Our church is in Lukweju. So we'll come to church after first service. They will take him back home. Leave me in church because I'm still going to wait for second service. And then come back. He knows that whenever we finish is when I finish. Perchance I will wander off from after that again. But there's no problem. Today, I have to preach. There's no, ah, you have to take me home. No, who brought me here? My husband in the car with the driver and my security team. They've dropped me off. They have gone. They will be back to pick me. That's a wise man. Ah, listen to me. You want to succeed in life as a man? Have wisdom. Just simple wisdom. Just know that when God says he has given you a helper, think, will he give you a helper weaker than you? Never mind she looks frail. Her strength is not in what you are looking for. It's not in her physical being. It's a strength that is divinely assigned. But if you have wisdom, the that which the Lord has divinely assigned to her is specific to his need. That is the truth. So when a man is meandering between women, he's an idiot. Because he will confuse all the things. What he needs, he will leave. What he doesn't need, he will covet. After a while, he doesn't even know what he needs anymore. And at the end of the day, he will perish. Why? Because he messed it all up by himself. Guys, have wisdom. See, these girls, <laughs> understand, ask the Lord to reveal the true worth of your wife to you so you will know how to handle her for your own sake. When you do, none of your peers will be able to match you. I promise you. There is nothing like a team that works of a man and a woman who fed the Lord together but who have understanding of each other. If you are trying to be a small king with tiny K in an apartment or even a massive house, when the king of all kings has defined it differently, you're a fool. I have no apologies for using the word. Lift up your hands. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we love you. Father, we're thankful. We ask you, Lord, today to reveal ourselves to us. Open our eyes that we may see. Open our ears that we may hear you. Surround us with our helpers, Lord. Those that you have assigned to hold our hands. Let us identify our errands and our oars that we will not chase them away. Let's not lean on those who will destroy us. But instead, Father, let us lean on the true vessels that you have assigned to us. Show us our true wealth that we will not seek after worthless wealth. At the end of the day, Lord, help us to walk according to your will and in your ways. That when we're done, we can come home knowing that we have finished the job. And you can look at us and say, welcome, my true servant, because you have done my will. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And I pray that every single one of you will die empty. There will be nothing left that you are called and born to do that you will not do. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Let's put our hands together for Jesus.